What's good, everybody, and welcome to another episode of What's Good Games Live, your source for video game news, commentary, analysis, and funny stuff every morning right here at twitch.tv slash what's good games at 11 a.m. Pacific time. I'm Andrea Renee, joined by Miss Brittany Brombacher. Yellow. And we have two very special guests who are joining us today. Please welcome Chris Damaris and Blaine Gidsum from Good Morning from Hell. Hello. Gentlemen, thank you so much All for being on the show today. Yes, thank you for having us and for being on our show as well. Yes, yeah. so for everybody who is joining us live on Twitch, first off, welcome to the show. Hope you had a great weekend. And for everybody listening on podcast services and YouTube, we guested on Good Morning from Hell. The episode is currently live. I listened to it this morning. Uh, Brittany, we're pretty funny. Just want to say. We're pretty darn good. <laughs> I was just telling Blaine during the break that... I just realized, so for those of you like, okay, what is this good morning from hell? The idea in this particular episode is that Andrea and I are vying for a scholarship. We are both witches and we need to get this scholarship, you see. She's from Hogwarts and I'm from Pig Nipple Community College. I just <laughs> now understood the reference of Pig Nipple. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> And it just clicked as I was typing it out on Twitter, pig nipple. And I was like, oh, yeah, that was funny. I appreciate it. <laughs> it took like two weeks, but it was a slow yeah, burn. Yeah, better late yeah. than ever. It, ha you know, it festered in there, and I finally yeah. understood it. And for people unfamiliar with Good Morning from Hell, it's a podcast uh, that takes place in hell where uh, I'm dead, and my eternal punishment is to do a podcast where I interview everyone from the underworld and uh, – Blaine is my co-host, who is uh, Satan's little brother named Clayton. That's right. And, and you have a sick on... accent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's like a gravelly low voice. <laughs> yeah, it was some stupid character that we both did on an improv show, and then people are like, oh, that was funny, and then we like, and then it never died. So <laughs> I'm still doing it two years later or something. And I heard that you sometimes get into red makeup for this character. That's right. Even when it's an audio-only podcast, I completely cover myself in red makeup and horns. And uh, <laughs> he commits. Yeah, that's right. Method. You know, we're all we're all about the commitment here at What's Good Games as well, because you know we are clearly in character constantly. Yeah. <laughs> mm. No, no, that's Power, a lie. Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> I mean, it, it's been a thing that's taken off. So the Powerpuff thing was suggested as fan art in the very first year that we had launched, and we just kind of ran with it, and we've been able to do some really fun um, kind of fan art with it from the other side. And what I mean by that is in our Patreon, we have an artwork tier where we send out postcards with custom artwork that we make and we handwrite uh -huh. postcards to people in that tier. And Steimer just decided that she wanted to keep making different versions of us as like the derpiest Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so we've done quite a few of those. And for she's actually doing the artwork for June's postcard. And she was like, okay, listen, I got to take a break from the derpy Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> do something else. And I have to say, Brittany, she's given you a run for your money on this work of art that she's created. Oh, hell no. <laughs> See, I'm the Bob Ross of What's Good Games, fellas. I don't know if you're aware of this, <laughs> but my Microsoft Paint uh, art skills know no bounds. So if you're ever looking to commission art, you just let me know. Happy trees <laughs> and such. I remember making that connection. I think I met you guys at RTX a couple of years back. And then when I was all hanging, I was like, oh, wow, like they had different hair colors. You guys are Powerpuff Girls. I thought I was so clever for pointing that out. And then you guys are like, yeah, yeah uh, well, we know. We know. <laughs> yeah, it turns out everybody does that. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Uh, that's okay. You don't you don't have to feel sorry for it at all. But uh, we do have lots of news to get into because it was a jam packed weekend. Thank you to everybody who showed up on Saturday morning, bright and early, when we were streaming along with our friends for the Gorilla Collective press conference. There was also a bunch of other things that happened, so we'll get into that in just a minute. But I do have a few pieces of housekeeping before we do that. Of course, we've already mentioned that the episode of Good Morning from Hell is live. You can find that wherever you listen to What's Good Games. Plus, on Tuesday, June 30th, we're teaming up with our friends at GameSpot for their Play for All summer charity stream from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific time. It's going to be a lot of fun, and we'll have the link once we get a little bit closer. But mark your calendars for Tuesday, June 30th for that. Of course, June is Pride Month. 
What's Good Games is excited mm -hmm. to be partnered once again with GLAAD, the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation, who's doing great work furthering the voices of the LGBTQ plus community in the, in the realm of video games. If you go to whatsgoodgames.com slash store, you will see our Pride merchandise there. 100% of the profits of our Pride merchandise goes directly to GLAAD, which we are super pumped about. Plus, we're going to be doing even more streaming this week, Brittany. We are starting with this Thursday is EA Play, ladies and gentlemen. Are we going to get that Mass Effect trilogy remaster? I fucking hope so. So that kicks <laughs> off at 4 p.m. Pacific. So we'll probably be ready to go around 3.45 that, on Thursday. So twitch.tv slash what's good games. Come join us. It'll be fun. And then this Friday, we're doing a PC build with our friends at AMD. So... Andrea is going to have a big old hunk of PC parts on her. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm how so are excited. Remote? How are you doing this? Okay. Like, how's so it going to go down? I have, I have some prep work to do in the studio, but I have a sky cam mounted on the lighting rig. Oh shit. We uh, fancy. Damn. I know. And so I have to, work out the angles but we're gonna have a wide shot cam of course we'll do a close-up cam and then we'll have a sky cam so you guys can see um and don't worry we're gonna be safe about it uh my friend leslie Peritano from andy is coming she's gonna be wearing a mask i'll be wearing a mask we're gonna wash our hands make sure everything's clean to make sure that we're being covid safe of course and we're going to show you guys how to build a PC from scratch. So uh, thank you to AMD for helping us with this build. We're really excited about it. They have supplied all the parts for it. We have a really fun custom case. And we're going to be showing you their new Radeon graphics card and all kinds of cool gear. And we'll walk you through step by step just how to put all these pieces together. So if you've always wanted to know how to build a gaming PC or if you've never watched a live build. I know that there's quite a few Twitch streams these days on live builds. We hope that you guys tune in at 11 a.m. Uh, Pacific time is when we're actually going to get started for that on Friday, this Friday. So it should be a good time. And then, Brittany, on Saturday, we have even more streams. We do. We have our Patreon stream. So if you're a patron of ours, you can check out our happy hour Q&A live stream this Saturday at 4 p.m. Pacific. We're going to be drinking and taking questions. It's going to be a good time. And then at 6 p.m. is our after hours stream where we play a game. What are we going to play? We don't know yet. We won't know probably until about 5 30 p.m. That sounds but that's right. okay. That sounds like a what's good games planning. Um, Here we go. All right. That is going to do it for announcements for us. Thanks for hanging in there, everybody. Let's get into the news. So first up, as I mentioned at the top of the show, the Gorilla Collective was live all weekend long. They had multiple streams, dev interviews. Did you guys catch any of the kind of press conference stuff that was happening this weekend, uh, Chris and Blaine? Uh, mostly just been looking up at the headlines and like checking out the games that have been interesting to me. But I did see the one that stuck out to me the most, the System Shock coming back for, a, I guess, an HD re-release. Mm. Yeah, yeah so this so has been in the works for quite some time it went dark for a while they put the project on hiatus and we didn't hear from it and then boom it's back now i think 2018 is when they put the project on hiatus and it's crazy to think that maybe we're just like old gamers but system shock <laughs> is something that a lot of people don't even know what it is or that it existed in the first place that's like the predecessor to Bioshock, right? I mean, Correct. that's like a huge game. But I mean, are they doing like a totally different engine or is it like kind of like the Halo thing where it's you can click a little button and it upreses? I'm curious, like how in depth, how much of a redo this thing is? That's a great you ask question. Us questions like we work in video games and should know the answers. To this. <laughs> I don't know why you're putting us on the spot like I'm that. I'm so sorry, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> I will uh, go to the Google machine and see if I can okay. find out uh, the details about everything that is coming in the System of Shock remake. So which... while she's on the Google machine, I have a few highlights of my own that I'd like to talk about. Yeah, go for it. Um, number one, and I don't know what press conferences these came during because there was like, I feel like a million this weekend. That's a lie. It's an exaggeration. There was the PC gaming show, the feature gaming show, and then the girl collective. Anyway, the first one is that Persona, Persona 4 Golden is coming to Steam which I think is very, very exciting. Are there any Persona fans on this stream right now? Blaine, well, you know Chris? I don't play Persona. Uh, I know you don't. I've, I've been, been to the locations those... in Japan, apparently. <laughs> you know, that's yeah, more than me. That's <laughs> that's cool. I'm um, a bigger okay. fan than you. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> I mean, that's actually not true because I've actually played Persona. So sorry, I was trying to throw you a bone, but it was oh, completely. Dang. I falsely raised your confidence. Apologies. So anyway, this is really exciting because this was a Vita exclusive, and this was actually my first Persona game. So if you have not played it, it's currently $20 on Steam. I wish it would come to console. That'd be amazing. But it's really good. If you like Persona 5, absolutely check out Persona 4. 
Uh, let's see. And then there was a game called Gory that was announced. And it's described as the following. Come hang out with Frank, the razor sharp hoverboard, and Chip, the depressed modular AI that's constantly complaining as you wipe out hordes of cuddly and horrible toys, all while playing as Gory, the most adorable and badass cat in the world. So you play as this, like, realistic orange tabby, and you're on a spaceship, and then you're on a hoverboard, and then you're taking out stuffed unicorns that are, somehow have blood in them. I don't understand uh. it. I don't understand it, but I'm definitely intrigued by it. And it's spelled G-O-R-I. And Andrea, I immediately thought of you because it's a cat. I, I appreciate that being the de facto cat lady of What's Good Games. But I, <laughs> this sounds a little bit too off the wall for me. I don't know how I feel about it being kind of I think of you'll like it, it. Check it out. It sounds like Conker's Bad Fur Day or something like that. Or it's like a cute uh, thing that's okay. also really violent and, and, and gruesome. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't look at it. I think you'll like it. And there's like neon lights and rock music. It's kind of it looks really good, personally. And then my true love, Divinity, Divinity Original Sin 2 got some new DLC, which is incredibly exciting. They got new um, armor, a new quest line, and a new boss fight. And there's also a prequel comic canon coming as well to the Larian store. So cool for me. I'm excited <laughs> about it. No one else fucking cares, but that's okay. I don't think no one else cares. I just I think mean, that you are the de facto Larian fangirl, and that's okay. There's uh, nothing wrong passionate. with that. Yeah. Most passionate. Yeah, there you go. So I, I'm seeing that System Shock, it looks like they were using Unreal Engine 4, and I think it was a Kickstarter, but then, I don't know. It's yes, going to be cool. It was, and <laughs> the alpha demo is out now. Apparently you can Shit. play it currently. Um, on Steam or GOG. It's an alpha yeah, build, back. but looking very promising, says PC Gamer. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, they crowdfunded for $1.3 million, promising to capture the original horror romp, but freshening it up. It's been a meandering journey, though, uh, with Night Dive pausing development in 2018, like I mentioned, and then starting mm. over. Yes. Woof. That's, yeah, that that's rough. Starting not great. over? That's what it says. Just like they just decided we're gonna start from scratch why not apparently uh, oh yeah here's a story back from march of 2018 system shock remakes change in direction expects to release probably q1 of 2020 lol <laughs> <laughs> that didn't happen um but yeah if you're into system shock and you've been following that story you can check out the alpha demo i'll probably wait because alphas are usually not great broken <laughs> yeah yeah I mean, we also got a by design. There was a Jane Jane Silent Bob game. That oh was, yeah. I'm not a fan, but you know, I'm sure a lot of people are like, yeah. So you mean not a, you're not a fan of the game? You're not a fan of Jane Silent Bob as like a an IP. I'm not a fan of Jane Silent Bob as an IP. <laughs> I never got it. I never caught on to like the hype for it. So I liked yeah. the original one because I feel like it really captured that quintessential late '90s, early 2000s comedy when everybody was like in love with jackass right but yeah. i feel like if you were to go back and watch it now i don't think a lot of the jokes would land the same way i guess Clearly, i saw clerks don't know me oh <laughs> that's, yeah Brittany's i mean like, that's where they started excuse me <laughs> jay and silent bob and they just kind of spun off into their own little like mini adventures i don't know yeah. i'm like a I, 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 I'm not opposed to Jay and Silent Bob, but I've never been like, I gotta get that Jay and Silent Bob video game. <laughs> Chronic you know? blood, let's go. Yeah, my husband just tried to get me into Jay and Silent Bob, and I was pretty drunk, so I thought I would for sure enjoy it. But <laughs> for some reason, it did not land. I didn't get it, but he's still adamant that I watch it. So we'll maybe see Maybe it's the happens. wrong, like, maybe instead of drunk, you have to be high. I don't know. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> got to be more The wrong down. equation. <laughs> 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 we gotta start from scratch like system shock <laughs> <laughs> watch them all over again it's not like you don't have time just throwing that yeah. out there yeah. no joke you watch all your favorite uh like shows and movies but like would di like sober drunk stoned and see which 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 combination is the best Ooh, that's a show idea i've been to it Hey, Andrea, not to totally deviate from Guerrilla Collective, but you did mention EA Play earlier. Wasn't yes. there a rumor going around that Dead Space? I'm sorry, I'm like all high on my like uh, space horror games right now. Do you think Dead Space is going to... Is there any I think, rumor? I, Hello, I'm not Andrea, but I'm going to step in anyway. Go, I think Dead go Space ahead, go ahead, Brittany. is dead in the water. I know 
apparently the creator of Dead Space was supposed to unveil a new game during the PS5 stream last week. Right. I never caught what that was. But uh, either. that's what I heard the rumor thing happen. But yeah, if anyone it. in chat knows what it was, I tried looking it up, but I couldn't find out which one it was. I would love if Dead Space came back. But from what I have heard from mumblings is that it was once pitched to continue that series, but it was turned down. So I think there's just a chance it's just not going to happen. Oh, it's so good. I know. Go uh, Even an HD remake or whatever. I'll take I would it. take that. Absolutely. I think a, a collection would be in order. Like, why not? But if right. I have to choose between a Mass Effect collection and a Dead Space collection, Dead Space can kick rocks. <laughs> yeah. Alien sex. Let's go. <laughs> uh, I remember. Oh, go ahead. So No, no. After you. Uh, no, so I, I uh, played Mass Effect 1, got really into it, like completed the shit out of it. And then I got into 2 and there was some glitch to where my hard drive got bricked and then none of my stuff transferred over. And I was like, there's no point. There's no point. And that's where I ended my Mass Effect journey. No, but just... you could start fresh and have a new journey, though, and make all of the same choices because that's what everybody does, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? No, True. just me? Yeah. Just me? Okay. <laughs> Uh, right. <laughs> uh, we are going to talk about EA in just a second, but I do want to mention the PC Gaming Show recap as well. I did not see that in here unless it's further down the list and I no. missed it. Um, so that happened later in the afternoon on Saturday, and I'm not going to go over absolutely everything that was in our show, in that show, but just kind of a couple of high-level things. So they showed Outlast Trials, the latest game in the Outlast series, yes. which Brittany and I played in an episode of Lights Off, our horror Let's Play show. Um, Outlast, not Outlast Trials. No, we, play, Out we played Outlast... Two? Two, I think. Yeah, I think it was two. But what's exciting about Trials is that they're implementing multiplayer and co-op. And it sounds what? like the co-op's going to be optional, so you can play with up to four people if you so choose. But so, we still don't know what the gameplay loop is going to be like. But are they going to like have motorcycles in it? Is this like a Trials Evolution crossover? Or... <laughs> <laughs> I'm being serious right now. I don't know anything about Atlas, and I know so, a little bit about Trials. So the CG trailer essentially showed some dude getting something like nailed to his face. I don't know what happened. And then he was running down a hall. And then this other girl was on top of this like box trying to help him up, like raising, lowering her arm, like, hey, let me help you up. And then she got stabbed through the throat, I think it was, and then it stopped. So, and then you get on motorcycles. And, and then they get on a motorcycle. Puzzle. Yeah. And then they GTFO and do like wheelies and shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, no, so Outlast as a horror series, the game really embraced this idea of you can't fight, you just have to run away and hide. And so in the first game, you essentially are just holding a camcorder while you're going through this asylum. And there's all these really freaky enemies. And if they find you, they'll chase you down and murder you very brutally. And it's terrifying oh. to play because you can't fight back, really. You don't have any weapons or anything. You just have to literally run away and not get caught. Oh, that sounds yeah, like, like Alan Wake or something. You just run around with a flashlight. I think uh, it was Alan Wake. Uh, you had a oh, little... Luigi's Mansion oh. where you have... <laughs> <laughs> Did you just happen to have a comedy. flashlight on your desk? It's like my fidget spinner. It's, it's like I've just been playing with this the whole time. <laughs> I like it. I like that you had props ready. I feel like it's a step of our game, Brittany. <laughs> we need something. No shit. What's, I need, need somehow to have a, a tape measure come up in conversation. I'm like, I'm ready. <laughs> oh, I got you. I yeah. got you. <laughs> Uh, I don't have mine. I don't have you a guys... tape measure within reach. What the heck? How long does yours go? <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> long. 16 feet. 25. Oh, dang. Ooh. She's got an extra Fritz nine feet. Longer. <laughs> yeah, mine's longer. Don't be jelly. Oh, okay, this is uh, this one places that I was not anticipating. As uh, Excess Oddity says in the chat, what is happening? LOL. <laughs> okay, <laughs> back to the PC gaming show uh, <laughs> recap that happened. Um, so uh, Torchlight 3 is available now in Steam Early Access. Ooblets, this adorable yep. little game that we've had our eyes on for a couple of years now. Uh, Early Access is coming this summer to Xbox One and the Epic Game Store. Persona 4 Golden, Brittany already mentioned. Um, there's a first-person horror game called Sound Mind that was shown um, at the show. Airborne Kingdom is the name 
of no wait, Airborne Kingdom is a different game. Uh, it'll let you build and fly fantastic machines. I'm reading a rundown, by the way, from our friends over at Shack News. Um, there is uh, let's see here. Let me skip down. There's there's so many. Uh, Godfall, the game that we also saw earlier this week in the PlayStation press conference, is get got some new details and more gameplay. Let's see here. There's just so much, so much stuff. Do they have, a lot. Do they have any like VR news? What's the state of VR these days? Because I just invested in an index, and I hope I didn't mess up. <laughs> you know what's I? You know what's interesting about you bringing that up is that we really haven't heard anything about VR in the last month or so, as far as like traditional E3 style press releases or conferences. Oh my gosh, you just have it there. It lost lane. Hold on. I'm in the VR. <laughs> oh my God. Isn't there the VR showcase coming up? Upload VR showcase Upload is happening VR. on Tuesday. Yeah. So that will okay. hopefully be our um, our first look at what's been going on with VR. But we noticed that PlayStation had not a word to say about PSVR. But we do think that the showcase last week was focused predominantly on PS5 and things it happening and coming to the PlayStation 5. And there's rumors it, that there's going to be PSVR 2, but I don't I don't know if it's time for that yet. PlayStation V PlayStation 5 <laughs> PSVR 2. God. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that would be a pretty big announcement and they would I mean if it's been going well enough with PSVR, that would warrant its own showcase, I guess. So, mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know. Do you do you guys have VR? Do you dabble? Yeah. 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 I yeah. Have I think all of the all of the VRs, which is ironic, because I don't play them really anymore. Sad. I got them primarily for horror games because I love playing VR horror games because I love apparently hurting my soul. I'm not sure that's all about, but yeah. I mean, I look I, right now. I'm playing the Oculus Quest. That's kind of like my go-to. Yeah, I don't cool. have to have all the cords. Quest has been a game changer going mobile, and I really, really enjoy the freedom to move around, especially if you're playing a motion intensive game like Beat Saber or Autica. I recently played through The Looking Glass, which is an Alice in Wonderland adventure game that I really enjoyed. And there's just so much you can do when you're not like tethered. But of course, what that means is that you have not as good fidelity, quality, et cetera. And that's something that VR has yeah. continued to struggle with. And I think that, you know, Valve is trying to set the benchmark for that with Vive. And obviously Half-Life Alex was hugely popular for the platforms that it was released on, I'm still hoping that they're going to make a 2D version <laughs> um, instead of just a VR version. But I don't know if that's ever going to happen because it seemed like Valve was very much like, this is VR. We made, we custom built this specifically for VR. Did you guys... I feel like um, they're gonna, is that why well, you got They the like want to push people to get it. And I think that that's why they would probably keep it strictly VR. It's just like make people adapt it or, or adopt it. Yeah, it's just so expensive, though. I mean, to have a gaming PC yeah. in the first place is expensive, and then the Vive itself is expensive on top of that. It's just, I feel like the barrier to entry is still too high for most people. Yeah. I And the locomotion controls I'm still figuring out, because like I'm like halfway through, and I have to walk whenever Alex walks. So I'm like literally walking in place in my living room. I must look like a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> Put a camera on game, you. Though. I should. I should stream that someday. Just. Yeah. Good Did stuff. you guys ever see that VR treadmill? The I think it was called oh, the dude. Omnix. I tried it at CES circa like 2015, I want to say. Essentially, it it's like, like a, a round treadmill. Inverted nipple. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cat VR, I had seen something recently that Cat VR was doing like a home model that was going to be a pretty low price point. I think they had said somewhere around the $700 range, which is like for a fucking VR treadmill. Sorry. Uh, yeah. That's not bad. <laughs> Uh, I would get that, and it's it's the 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 actual space of it's no bigger than like a big size office chair. I feel like so. Yeah, yeah. I want I want one of those too. Don't you have to wear weird shoes and they strap you in? Yeah. Yeah, you're basically you just... moonwalking the whole time. I think. Fuck yeah, I'm yeah. in. Sign me up. I don't know it's... how like squatting works though. Yeah, you it's get a good workout. It was it was a whole thing when I tried it. I didn't realize that I was wearing a dress because I had like a full day of on-camera shooting when I was at CES. And then I get there and I'm like, so uh, if I put that harness on, everybody standing around watching me do this demo is going to see my butt. So they didn't yeah. they didn't make me wear the harness, thankfully. So you don't technically okay. have to. It's just, you know, safety and all that. <laughs> you just break yeah. the arm of the <laughs> machine and it just collapses. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
I just, we don't normally call out subs or bits during the show because we save it to the end since this is a podcast as well. But Caladrius25 dropped 5,000 bits for badasses Blaine and Chris in the chat. That oh, is shit. Well, Adrius is, is like our number one RT community member. So she's the best. Oh, thank awesome. you. Well, thank you so Galadrius. much for the support. We appreciate that. Um, all uh, right, well, we got more news, so let's uh, let's continue on, shall we? With Star Wars Squadrons officially revealed. Brittany, would you woo. read this one for me? I will. I'll give it my awesome announcer voice as well. So wow. Star Wars Squadrons officially revealed out in October from IGN. EA has formally announced Star Wars Squadrons, a first-person space dogfighting game <laughs> set after the events of Return of the Jedi coming to PS4, Xbox <laughs> One, and PC. Via Origin, Steam, and Epic Game Store, it will be released for $39.99 US dollars on October 2nd. Developed by Motive Studios, the game will include both a single-player story and multiplayer modes with cross-play support across all platforms and can be played in VR on PS4 and PC. EA will premiere gameplay at EA Play Live on June 18th. Squadrons will feature a single-player story mode set after the Battle of Endor. I know nothing about Star Wars, so I'm going to butcher all this heads up. Okay, Battle Sorry, of Endor <laughs> and the destruction of the Death Star 2. Alternating between two customizable pilots, the story will feature brand new characters and cameos from familiar faces. The pilots you play will show you both sides of the game's conflict. One flies for the New Republic's Vanguard Squadron, whoa, and the other for the Shattered Galactic Empire Titan Squadron, whoa. Multiplayer will take the form of 5v5 battles with two modes announced. Fleet battles will task each team with destroying the opposing team's flagship, while dogfights will simply ask each team to destroy as many opponents as possible. Locations will be both known and unknown. And Yavid Prime in a shattered moon of Galatin announced so far. <laughs> now, Good job, Brett. Thanks. Makes clear that squadron composition will be important, implying multiple ship classes to experiment with. EA also confirmed that while Star Wars squadrons will include cosmetic and gameplay related customization, all upgrades will be earned solely through playing the game. Playing through the game will earn you weapons, holes, engines, and shields to allow you to tweak your starfighter into whatever you want it to be, while cosmetics will alter your cockpit, ship, exterior, and pilots. Um, like I already said, it'll be $39.99 on October 2nd. And EA Access and Origin Access Battle subscribers can play 10 hours of the game for free at launch and will get 10% off if they choose to buy it. Nice. Yeah. Um, so, very so, so, Blaine, are this. you a little bit of a Star Wars fan? I am a small amount of a Star Wars fan. Sorry. Teach I need me to all of the things, up. Blaine. Teach me. Uh, sorry. Hold on. Let me. I almost broke my headset. Uh, Alana <laughs> gave me that ages ago. Um, let me see. I was actually looking up because I'm like really into the lore and I like read all the comics as well. And they had a TIE Fighter comic. And I'm wondering if that's connected to that. Like if the characters cross over. Oh. I don't think that they do, though. But uh, yeah, I'm stoked. I'm, I'm interested, like why the lower pri uh, price point? And I, my only assumption is because Battlefront 2 has Starfighter battles, but this will only offer like an expanded version of Starfighter battles and it not won't have like the shooter aspect to it. Mm. Um, but it sounds like there's like a there's a campaign stuff like that. So I'm like I'm really yeah. curious why they ended up going with like thirty nine ninety nine as opposed to full price. It would seem to me that they are trying to set expectations, which is smart of them, that it's not going to be like a Battlefront two experience, right? Like they're going yeah. to be getting something that is not going to be as lengthy as you would expect from a traditional AAA campaign. And I think that's smart of them because EA is already having a tough go, particularly when it comes to their Star Wars titles. So I think it's smart of them to try to get out in front of that to see like how they can maybe win back some people to say, hey, we can do we can do Star Wars and not screw it up. We promise. <laughs> <laughs> I like that they're also adapting like a class based thing. Like I'm assuming that like if you kind of use Overwatch as an approximation, like an A-Wing would be like Tracer. It's fast and it zooms in and out. But then like uh, an X-Wing might be more of a tank. You know, like I'm really curious to see how combat's going to play out in that regard. And they better have B-Wings or else I'm going to cry. <laughs> yeah. Brit, you don't get that reference, but no. you would want a B-Wing because B is Brit. B, Brit, yeah, yeah I'm a B-Wing, bitch. Um, <laughs> interesting. No, I... <laughs> I don't know. I'm just trying to have this conversation. I was this. I have to admit, this does really nothing for me. Anything where I, you have to fly or drive a thing, 
It's just like not my forte. I always crash into the walls. In this case, I'll probably crash into an asteroid or something. I don't know. Wait, and, just uh, flying? Because I thought you were a Twisted Metal fan. Just a metal fan, yeah. Vehicular combat, man. So That's what just, I said. I need it's some just motivation. Space combat is what you're talking about. Flying. She, she doesn't like that Z axis being yeah. involved. I'm telling you, like, it's hard. Like not having a horizon line like messes you up. Or realistic like racers, for example. Like I'm just real bad at staying on track. But I don't know. I mean, if if the single player campaign is like, oh my god, Rucker sucks, amazing, then I'll probably check it out. Otherwise, I'll just go to Blaine for visceral reactions. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think a squad kind of like set up is fun because I haven't had a good squad since like Star Fox. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> oh no! Dang. Like the original sixty four or the NES? Which one? Super NES? Oh, Which oh, one? I, I, I did. My favorite was uh, sixty four. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's probably yeah, the best one. We could argue about it later, but I, I'm yeah. with you. Um, yeah, so. So, Chris, are you as big into Star Wars as Blaine is, or are you just kind of like me? You're like, hey, I really enjoy Star Wars, but I'm not like super nerd Star Wars. Well, I'm very much into Star Wars, but I uh, I don't read the comics or books like Blaine does. So he has like all that in-depth expanded universe knowledge that I, you know, I'm a little lacking in. But it, I will, if in a, in a lightsaber fight, I would win. Oh. <laughs> Oh, you think so, huh? Okay. Uh, there's also like a novel. It might already be out called Alphabet, Alphabet Squadron that might connect. Um, sorry, I'm just like getting way too into the no, lore. No, go for it. Uh, no, I, I appreciate it. We were just it. talking about VR, and apparently you can play this in VR, mm -hmm. which I think is like fucking rad because I'll be able to sit like here and I won't have to be walking around walking in place to play my Star Wars. You, are you worried about getting motion sickness, though, playing a game like this in VR, or are you good? I mean, the only thing that gives me motion sickness in VR is is the locomotion. Like when I'm telling my person to move forward, I don't like the teleportation because that that seems wrong and it messes with the pacing of the game for me. So like when I'm using the joystick to tell my person to walk forward, that's where it messes with me. But if it's like if you're sitting in a ship and that's the kind of like natural state you would be in flying or driving, then I don't think I'm going to get motion sickness now. It's so. interesting that you say that you don't like the teleporting because the teleporting was designed specifically to combat that type of motion sickness, which is why if a game, a VR game has locomotion or teleporting, I teleport every time because that, yeah. like you said, that, that motion of walking forward in VR, like I instantly am like, <laughs> can't do it. Yeah. Well, the teleporting is just like, it's just like, Bleh, like shit just like pops in your face immediately. <laughs> And like with Half Life, Alex, that's the only one that I'm using like the the normal locomotion. It just seemed wrong because like I feel like you would want that to be paced like a horror game, and you wouldn't want to like teleport into a face crab or something. So, <laughs> <laughs> hello, I can walk straight fine, but it's when I turn I have to use the little interval jumps that most games provide. Oh, where it's like, like it, 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 yeah, yeah, exactly. I can handle that, but it's the turning that fucks me up. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Star Wars though, I'm seeing X wings, Y wings, A wings. U wings. wings, no B wings. I haven't seen any B wings. Maybe they're Maybe saving right. it for for a reveal next week. This week. All right, motive. If not, no one. one for you. <laughs> we no gotta. One we, yeah, we can't reveal everything. We gotta save that save that B ring <laughs> B ring reveal for like. <laughs> well, I mean, but like real talk, I fully believe that this announcement was supposed to happen during EA Play Live, and because mm -hmm. it, they had multiple leaks. I'm sure they're like, okay, well, we just got to get out ahead of this. Clearly, everybody knows that this is a thing. What can we put out ahead of time to tease? And then maybe they'll show some extended gameplay during EA Play Live, and you'll get to see some more. I'm hoping me. so, because I woke up at, or I mean, I was already awake uh, <laughs> to watch this specifically. And I was like, oh, it's just a trailer. I mean, it was like, it was a good trailer. The music was popping, but like, gameplay. I was like, I want the campaign. Tell me more. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess Thursday would be the spot where we would see more about that. So we'll I'll keep our there. eyes peeled, and, and maybe on the on the Friday show we'll have more to report. All right, um, moving right along, Insomniac has confirmed that Spider-Man Miles Morales is, in fact, 
a standalone PS5 game. So I know that this was very hotly contested last week on the internet. So over at The Verge, they write that Insomnia Games has confirmed the newly announced Spider-Man Miles Morales will be a standalone title, squashing rumors that the title was simply a remastered version or an expansion of the original PS4 Spider-Man that have been swirling since the reveal. Spider-Man Miles Morales will reportedly be in smaller in scope than the original, though, per a Bloomberg report that compared it to Uncharted The Lost Legacy in scope. Part of the confusion stems from comments made by Simon Rudder, the EVP head of European business at Sony Interactive Entertainment, who commented, in an interview with The Telegraph, I guess you could call it an expansion and an enhancement to the previous game. There's a substantial Miles Morales component, which is the expansion element, but also within the game as well, there's been major enhancements to the game and the game engine, obviously deploying some of the major PlayStation 5 technology and features. Despite Rudder's comments, though, developer Insomniac Games has confirmed in a tweet that Spider-Man Miles Morales is a standalone game that continues the adventures of Spider-Man. Oh, boy. Do you think that the confusion or like the wording behind why it's the expansion or improvement is it's in the same city, right? They've got to use like the same New York. So like, but I mean, aside I from that, it's going to be completely new combat and stuff. Yeah, I don't Just see referring anything to wrong anything with that. A- as an enhancement or expansion is confusing because you're like, yeah. oh, so it's like, like DLC, you, just, you know, or yeah, it doesn't the- sound like a new game. The wording is just an expansion and an enhancement to the previous game. There's substantial Miles Morales component, which is the expansion element, but there's also been major enhancements to the game. Yeah, it was just confusing wording. Poor Insomniac, man, right, so on their Twitter account. This is what happens when you let people who are not close to the game publicly speak about the game, and then PR doesn't come in immediately to correct the things spoken about the game, right? Like, if Insomniac was going to be doing interviews, like, they should have just done interviews about it, but instead this one executive decides he knows about the game. And I just feel for my friends who work at Insomniac and all the fires that they were putting out after the PS5 reveal of people like freaking out when this happened. And it's like, oh, it's just an expansion. Also, if it was just an expansion, awesome. Spider-Man yeah, what's wrong great. with that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't get why people are trying to downplay it. I, I wonder if they're going to do like, uh, oh God, what is it? The Spider-Verse kind of angle, you know, where they're going to like all New York. So maybe they reskin New York or something like that. I would be cool. stoked. That could be cool. Like, Spider-Man's like awesome again. Like it kind of like Andrew Garfield was like, uh. <laughs> and now it's cool again. It is. I, I really enjoyed Into the Spider-Verse. We told Brittany that she needs to watch it because she hasn't seen it yet. You haven't seen it yet. I know I'm the Thank worst. You. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> Blaine's like walking away. <laughs> it's like the perfect, good. It's like the perfect movie. It really is. Okay. It's like the perfect movie. It's, it's like the perfect, perfect movie. movie. Is it better than Austin Powers, though? That's the question. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Wow. And okay. I also so- share your appreciation for dumb comedies. I mean, not as deep as you like to appreciate them, but I I can't tell you enough. Like, I also, in the beginning, was dragging my feet watching this movie because I, for some reason, I had this weird, like, thing where I just didn't want to watch it because it was animated. And I was like, no, Spider-Man is action, and it's... Tom Holland, it's, you know, it's it's big blockbuster Marvel. And then I just kept hearing from everybody. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. So finally, I was like, okay. I sat down and watched it. And I was like, why did I wait so long to watch this? I mean, it was like a sure. cultural phenomenon or a pop cultural phenomenon. I mean, like, in the style is so... I get, like, kind of downplaying watching a movie because it's animated. Because for mm-hmm. some reason, I, I do that, like, with Disney movies. But, Britt, you got to go watch it. Okay. It, is it. Austin Homework. Powers your bar for like dumb comedy? Is that your like <laughs> highest? Uh, well, it's a combination of like Austin Powers, Kung Pao, like you know those okay. like really yeah yeah, yeah 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 yeah. It's you know so as long as it's above that, we'll see. Yeah. But it sounds like it is. It sounds like it's the perfect movie. So I feel like okay, I, I have mean, no more excuses. It was a seen bunch Batman of Batman animated series. Yeah. Okay. Well, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Can make a metaphor, but never mind. Uh, ah, yeah, I would have went over my head. Didn't happen. Would have been. It would have been lost. Uh, it would have. I'm pretty. Lost into the ether. It, it is. It is the Dumb and Dumber of, uh, of, finish the thought. Animated movies for dumb comedies. That I mean, I I appreciate I appreciate that reference because Dumb and Dumber is a classic. It's like a perfect comedy classic. All right. Now I feel like I need to watch Dumb and Dumber. 
Yeah, that sounds good. Guess I know what I'm, I'm doing just... later today. No. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to tweet you every day, starting now. Have you watched <laughs> Spider-Man yet? Okay, do it. Hold me accountable. That's what I need. <laughs> okay, um, Brittany, apparently this is the most important news of the day up next. Yeah, so KFC is coming out with their console, apparently. Yes, that's Kentucky Fried Chicken. All right, so this comes from our friends at Destructoid. Move over PlayStation 5 and get lost, Xbox Series X. KFC console, KF console, is the future of gaming. So KFC has thrown their hat into the ring with a KF console. Yes, the KF console. And a delicious <laughs> reveal on Twitter, KFC brought the big guns announcing the KF console. KFC's chicken bucket shaped powerhouse promises cross platform compatibility, true 4K, 100 FPS, frames per second, and most importantly, a built in chicken chamber to keep your high calorie, high sodium processed meat nice and warm while you slowly waste away in front of your television set. Now, is this monstrosity of insubstantial consumption a serious attempt at creating a console? Probably not, but there is a release date of November 12, 2020, at the end of the teaser, so maybe something will come of this. So, this has KFC been has. So they, they confirmed that this was a troll this morning. Of course. <laughs> of course it was. Absolutely, it was a troll. They're, what? <laughs> sorry, it's Chris. So... Sorry. It's not, it's not real. Aww. You're going to have to use a microwave to nuke your, your chicken now. I'm sorry. You can't use the KF console. Oh. But I just think it's so funny how KFC just is always kind of trolling the gaming industry. Remember when they released that I Love You Colonel Sanders dating sim last year? Yes. Oh my uh, gosh, it was so good. But that was like oh. a fully fledged game though, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it has, I have it here, 7,834 reviews on Steam with a very positive review. <laughs> like, so... I, I mean, feel... like... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Blaine. Well, Burger King Racers, like, it's not oh, unheard okay. of for, for weird fast food restaurants to dip their toe into gaming for whatever reason. Well, Taco Bell's been in gaming for a long time, too. I just love that this is happening. We need we need dumb stories like this, you know, more than ever. So thank you, KFC, for trolling all of us and putting out this epic trailer with dramatic music. And then it like opens up and there's this little grill on the bottom where you can put your chicken. I mean, I would buy it. Just saying. Uh, I, would I would buy, buy this. I think a nope. missed product opportunity for KFC is to make this a real thing, but make it like a functional air fryer. And say, hey, did you buy oh. a, a like a, a big bucket you couldn't finish? You want to reheat your your KFC? Boom, and the air fryer goes. Like this is a golden marketing opportunity to make this a real thing. It really yeah, is. Just, like plug your switch to the top of it, and it melts it. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh great. I thought they were gonna put their money where their mouth is. I was like, I was expecting another like engage level dumb console that no one asked for and would die, but. Mm -hmm. They let oh, us down. Wow. They let us down. They just didn't want to go through the arduous process of actually making a console. Let's be real. And a chicken yeah. nuker. Um, but the actual <laughs> most important news, I would say, of the day is that the itch.io bundle for racial justice and equality has raised over $7 million. Yay! And as a reminder, yeah. all of these proceeds are donated to the NAACP Legal Defense and Educational Fund and Community Bail Fund. And there are currently 1,700 games available. And you can all own all of them for as little as $5. And if you do the math, that's over $9,362 worth of games. Wow. I, th I thought it was ending... Soon. It ends tomorrow. There's like 15 hours left or like 13 hours left. So if you have not hopped on this, you should. Okay. So I just pulled up the website. So it's itch.io. That's what you have to go to. If you guys haven't been to itch.io, like there's a bunch of cool games that are on this website. It says the offer ends in 12 hours, 14 minutes, and 36 seconds. So if you're watching with us live, you've got 12 hours. And if you're listening to the podcast afterwards, it may be too late. Yeah. But um, I mean, you'll never have awesome. to buy another video game again. Pretty much. And I'm looking yeah. through the, the games. Like, it looks like a lot of fun ones, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, plus yeah. it's only five bucks. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, even if you just look at the front page, um, they've got Overland, Night in the Woods, Celeste. Um, they have Walden. They've got, um, what else do we have here that I have played? Oh, I know that they added uh, some stuff from Supergiant. Um, last week that they announced that. I mean, there's just a bunch of games in here. So there's a little something for it, everything. Cat lateral damage is in there, Britt. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I just love causing chaos being a cat. It's the best. Um, so congratulations to everybody at itch.io for a hugely successful campaign. And thank you to everybody who has been donating. That is phenomenal. And you get games. Video games. 
and and justice and equality. It feels like it's a match made in heaven. Sure. Okay, so now we're at the part of the show where we are going to take some of your questions. Every week we ask you guys to write to us at whatsgoodgames.com slash dearwgg. Or you can, of course, drop some questions in the chat and we'll do our best to catch them. So our first question, which we've kind of talked a little bit about, uh, Nate B says, what are you hoping to see get announced at EA Play this week? Anything in particular you're hoping for or more in-depth gameplay or deep dive on? I'm looking forward to seeing gameplay of Star Wars Squadrons, which we talked about, which just got announced. But I really hope there's some sort of Mass Effect trilogy remaster. Thank you for the awesome content you put out there and have a great day. So, gentlemen, besides the Mass Effect remaster and Star Wars, is there anything else from EA that you're like, ooh, what about this? Dead Space. <laughs> bring it back keep bring it alive it keep the hope alive i don't know of anyone who doesn't want dead space so yeah you know i don't know but they dead shut space. down visceral it's gone bring him back i don't care <laughs> dig them up from the grave yeah or in, in h3 any any dead space news i don't know just bring it back uh i might give mass effect another go if they if they did that so yeah I would. I, I might finally play Mass Effect because I tried to play it once or twice and then just like, you know, played for a couple hours and then got busy and forgot. Wait, you played for a couple of hours, you got busy and you forgot and never went back to Mass Effect? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like, it's one of those things that's like been on my to-do list. And then I was like, oh, this is fun. And then, you know, like life happens and you like move or something like that. And you like, and then you start trying to play and you like don't remember what happened. Yeah. And I was like, uh, I'll just play something else. So I, I need a reason to go back. So that'd be good. I, I'm sure they, they wouldn't want to overshadow their existing Star Wars news with more Star Wars news, but an update on Jedi Fallen Order. It's way too early for it, but I'd like to hear it because uh, uh, that game I'll, was. I'll have you know, we asked our Magic 8-Ball. So this is a little thing we do. So we always ask Magic 8-Ball every E3 time, a time of E3 questions. And we did mm. ask will there be a Jedi Fallen Order expansion? And the Magic 8-Ball said, it will be certain. Mm. It will be certain. The all Magic 8-Ball right. has never lied to us before. It's okay. like us all the time. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I don't want to fill you with false hope. In the PlayStation... I'll fly out there and crash it. In the PlayStation <laughs> reveal, we own, the Magic 8-Ball only got one question wrong. That's pretty oh. sure. That's, yeah. That's a good yeah. bit, too. Sorry, like going into production mode. That's a really funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we do it's an annual fun. E3 prediction show, and we were like, listen, everybody and their dog does an E3 prediction show. What can we do that will be fun and all the way dumb, which fits the What's Good Games brand? And we're like, let's and ask our accurate. questions to a Magic 8-Ball and see what happens. Who owns the Magic 8-Ball among you? Um, and where it's actually is it right now? here. Let me see if I can reach it. Well, no one owns it. It's a Magic 8-Ball. It's you community know? property. Yeah. So here's the Magic 8-Ball, um, and Steimer is our de facto Magic 8-Ball uh, master of the ball. <laughs> Oracle? <laughs> yes, Oracle. So you have to mail her the ball. No, no, she was, um, she was here. Um, so she okay. has been with me in quarantine since the very beginning, and so she has continued to come up here because we're in isolation, she's in isolation, and she's one of the, like, two or three people that I've seen since the beginning. Um, and everybody's got to have a quarantine buddy, you know? Yeah, I hear that. It's been, yeah. too, it's been too long to, to be alone. Three months. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But, yeah. The other thing I'd love to see from EA would be a Peggle game. Peggle 3. <laughs> Peggle 3. Peggle. Bring it back. Let's go. Give me all the balls. I want a Peggle. It's been too long. <laughs> Were you guys ever Peggle fans? Uh, no. I think I got the oh, trial. No, I, 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 I watched some people play it. It's so but fun. It. Like the original Peggle is great. Peggle two was awesome. Skip that weird iOS one. Don't even. Yeah, don't, that's time. garbage. But yeah, you can get Peggle two. I believe it's on. It's in Xbox for backwards compatibility. I believe. No, it it launched on Xbox One. Hmm. I'm pretty sure back in 20. Let me look it up. Peggle two. To the Google machine. So our Magic Eight Ball episode came out a few weeks ago, and some of the other predictions we have. Where is Dead Space dead for real? Oh, yeah, that was a question we asked. And the Magic 8-Ball said, yes. Oh, Magic 8-Ball! I'm so ball. sorry. I'm so sorry. You know what? If you ever get real frustrated, come back to the studio. You can bash that Magic 8-Ball in. I think it's going tits up anyway. It's starting to not work very well. The Magic 8-Ball? Yeah. It's yeah, remember? It's bubbles. It, it was, I don't know if it was the bubbles, but it kept, like, landing on its side and since Zimmer couldn't read. I think she was just being a little over aggressive with it. You gotta oh. like be gentle with the magic eight ball. Um oh. 
I, yeah, I, so just as a clarification, Peggle 2 was released December 2013, and it was released on Xbox One, Xbox 360, and PS4, so you can play it right now today. So, I, anywho. I honestly try to abstain from those kinds of addicting games because I just get sucked in. So it's like yeah. that, Angry Birds, Minecraft. I, I try to, like, they'll dip my toe in, and that's about it. Well, there. I... I'm not going to try to convince you then. It's it's very great, and uh, okay, I think you're missing well, out. Should maybe ask the Magic Eight Ball. Should Blaine play <laughs> Peggle? Uh, Mr. Oh. Magic Eight Ball, does Blaine need to play Peggle too? Ask again later. Oh, see, see uh, <laughs> oh no! Hook. I'm sure we'll remember to come back to that later. Yeah. Oh, look at the time into the show. Oh, <laughs> look at that! Look at that! Um, all right, our next question is from Jay Mahui. Um, I hope you are well and staying safe. Shout out to Rhi for sharing her thoughts and feelings on last week's episode. And thank you for your courage. Yes, Rihanna is the best. We love her. My question, has anyone had a things I never thought would happen question mark moment due to shelter in place? My moment was playing Star Wars Battlefront 2 with my older sister, whose last console was the PS1 when she beat the original Final Fantasy 7, and my younger brother, who mainly only plays multiplayer games. 2020 is weird, y'all. So Jay wants to know, a thing you never thought would happen that happened due to shelter in place. Yeah, I played Animal Crossing. Oh. Me too! <laughs> I I played the original one on like GameCube or whatever, and I was like, this game is dumb. And I and my friend kept he was like, No, no, here, here's like we could like you can build your island, you can mail stuff, and you can like I I don't know. This is not my thing. And so all the other games that have come out, I've just been like, Yeah, it's not my thing, not my thing. And then when this came out, I was like, no, I'm not playing that. That's not my thing. And then I, yeah, I played it. I literally Only have my Switch here on the desk because I was like, I haven't checked my turnip prices yet today. I got to do it before noon hits. And now I'm, I'm kind of screwed. But I'm with yeah. you. Animal Crossing was something I was like, what is this? I don't like it. I tried Pocket Camp when it came to uh, iOS. And I was like, oh, everyone's talking about playing this game. And I just did not get it because I think I didn't have the amazing Sherpas that I have today for New Horizons. So I, I'm i with you. That's awesome. We should be Animal Crossing yeah. friends. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I had a similar experience, but so my girlfriend's a personal trainer, not a huge gamer by any means, but her birthday started right when quarantine hit. So I was like, I got to get her a switch because I got to make up for this awful birthday she's about to experience. And she's addicted to Animal Crossing. So... <laughs> It kind of worked out because then I got my Doom Eternal time and she got her Animal Crossing time and it all there happy household. So. so the thing that you never thought would happen was... I would get my fitness enthusiast girlfriend to play video games obsessively. That's Didn't expect awesome. that. You know, we get that we question a lot and I'm sure you guys get it from your friends too about like, hey, how can I get my significant other, family member, partner, whoever that special person is in somebody's life to enjoy games the way that I enjoy games. And it's like, well, it's kind of hard to like push someone into a fandom, right? But it's yeah. awesome when you can open their eyes to something that they maybe just never thought that would bring them joy. And then it does. And then you can share that joy together. Yeah. Share the joy. You can go slay demons and she can harvest turnips or whatever you do in Animal Crossing. I don't know. I started playing Animal Crossing and it was fun relaxing but i only like to play at night right before bed but then i was getting cock blocked because everything was shut down <laughs> yeah. yeah all the stores are closed i was like come on too real uh for me i would say and i mean i know everyone who listens to the show is probably sick of listening to me talk about yakuza but the fact that i played seven yakuza games back to back in a row because i had the time because of quarantine i think was something that i quite i didn't think that would ever happen but now it's like one of my favorite series of all time but non-video game related something i have started that i never thought i would have is meditation it's a thing that i was thinking about trying because things are tough right now for a multitude of reasons not only of the quarantine we have a whole bunch of other shit going on in this world and i was finding myself in my brain like not in a very good spot so i thought okay what everyone talks about meditation and how it can be so good for you so I've done like 10 or so sessions of it so far. And I have to say, I'm, I'm really digging it. It's never something I thought I would actually try. But I think because of, A, the state that the world's in, that messes with you emotionally and mentally. And now that I'm kind of home and I'm not always traveling, I've made sure to make the time for it. And it's, I have to say, it's helping. It's helping. It's really good. 
So yeah. if you haven't checked it out, yeah, there's multiple apps. Um, I'm currently using an app called Headspace, and I really enjoy it. Yeah, Calm huh. has a bunch of meditation on it as well, and we've um, we've talked about their products on the show before. And there's a lot of like yoga studios that do meditation. There's a lot of like just free YouTube videos. There's a ton of resources. I'm glad to hear that you found something that's like helping center you. That's great. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's I started yoga street. as well, and that's like that was a quarantine development and i was like oh my god i've been missing out this is great oh, oh yeah i love yoga i've been trying to spread the the gospel of yoga far and wide i, I know it can be daunting enough. when you haven't done it before and you're like oh but i'm not bendy or flexible and it's like you don't have to be you will you'll get there eventually yeah yeah, yeah i i think the thing i learned about yoga recently because we did a like a yoga stream i was like man this this kicked my ass this is hard <laughs> yeah. this is like an actual really intense workout oh yeah but it's also not so hard that it's like you can't get into yeah. it yeah it's not like, like, I think it's like it, right you, you can t you can make it as difficult as you want yeah it's true i mean i i'm a, I'm a yoga lover for sure um i do want to ask you guys a couple questions um about your show um before we you know obviously wrap up the episode so Good morning from hell. You guys have been doing the show for quite a few episodes now, and we had you know, the pleasure of guesting on it, which we talked about at the top of the episode, but where did the genesis for this concept come from? Were you just like spitballing ideas for a podcast? Did you have this idea and you're like, how, what kind of medium do we want to put it into? Like, how did it all kind of come together? Uh, well, um, we had this improv show on Rooster Teeth called On The Spot, and Chris and I are like kind of paired comedically a lot, so we were partners on this one episode and we decided to do this bit where he was playing like an intern in hell and I was playing a demon. And then like these characters were kind of in that universe. And then Chris, yeah, well, you had the it, idea. Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd had the idea for like a podcast based in hell, like years ago, years, years, years ago. And, I, and my initial thinking was, Oh, we'll have something that's like, like, uh, like famous evil people like Charles Manson and stuff like news topical talking about the horrible things going on in the world, but from like an evil perspective. But then it's like, that, I don't know, just, it's kind of, it's not the world, so much bad shit's going on in the world that like that wasn't as fun. <laughs> and yeah. so it never really, like it was just an idea that was in the back of my head. And then we did these characters on this improv show. I was like, Oh, these are, these are like fun, like, you know, lighthearted, like silly stuff. And then also I just consume a lot of podcasts. And then I was like, like other improv, comedy narrative kind of shows like stuff like hello from magic tavern and stuff. I was like putting all those, those three kind of elements together. And then, you know, me and Blaine had those characters and I was like, Oh, what if we took those characters and, a, you know, just did a podcast that was in hell where we interview like history historical fictional, doesn't matter, you know, all over the place characters. And it's just like lighthearted, silly fun. And not like the initial, like horrible talk about horrible things in the news idea that I yeah. had like, we got enough Four of that years on Twitter. For that, yeah. yeah. That real. That's true. So the concept of the show, um, like clearly like the genesis, that, that makes sense, the story leads to it. But the way that you guys um, work with your guests, so when Brittany and I you know, first started talking to you about being on the show, I was like, I didn't obviously know like how the sausage is made or anything like that. And <laughs> I, I was a little nervous because I haven't done improv in a long time. And I have a long history of doing improv comedy. I was at an, I was in a professional improv troupe, like way back when in my early days. And I was like really nervous uh before <laughs> before we shot and i was just like oh no i don't know how this is all gonna come together i haven't done like an improv bit with a group in a long time but you guys were awesome thank you for making it so easy and Brittany, i had no idea that you were gonna be like so on point so major props to you <laughs> i appreciate Bogdania. that because i had never done any improv so i didn't know what to expect i was like i'm just gonna go in and chat it was fun it was a lot of fun you guys were both naturals it was a, it's, it's it's a really fun creative process kind of like finding the characters with our guests and and just like yeah. just playing make believe for an hour and everybody has fun so it's a it's a fun show have you guys ever had yeah. an episode where you went in with a really clear concept for wh where you wanted the creative to go and then through the process of improv it just completely changed into something different we've had episodes where we didn't know what the end of the, the thing was and then we just kind of meandered around a story and, and then we, we just like perfectly just like click together yeah, like you're like you find it and you're like oh my god this is the perfect way to end the show because we we try and always have like an ending you know where it's like 
I mean, that's something we did with y'all. It was like we we had an idea that was like, oh, well, what if this? And then we actually figured out a different way to get there through like the improv. We're like, oh, this is actually better than what we initially thought of, you know? So it's like finding those things or, or sometimes we'll have an idea for a character uh, and then the guests, whoever we have on will be like, well, what if I did this? And we're like, all right. Yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we've had guests on from all over Rooster Teeth, Achievement Hunter, Fun House, kind of funny. Uh, you know, we're reaching out to other guys. Should Troy Baker on at one point? He Just played like, the guy. Joker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we. I also like history stuff, so it's like always fun to have like a historical figure and then like twist yeah. it, you know? Completely accurate too. Like, like we had a the guy who did the, designed the Titanic recently uh, from, uh, and he the, in our version of history he didn't know that the Titanic sank. Because he died oh. right before it sank from food poisoning. And oh. that's why he's in hell, but he has no idea. Oh, no. So how do you come up with these ideas and concepts? Is it just in your head, random? Um, yeah. I yeah. mean, so, yeah, we'll just sit down. And, like, it's, Sometimes it's also like even working with like different people. Like sometimes people will come with us, hey, I have an idea for a character. Oh. Okay, you know, we'll do that. But then also sometimes we're like, all right, well, what's a, what's a, a historical character or, you know, thing? And what's a fun twist on them? Yeah. Or like, how does this person relate to that historical character? And I don't know. Yeah, it's good stuff. It all works out. Yeah. So do you see this podcast running from now until the end of time? Are you guys worried that you're going to run out of ideas? Or is the devil just inherently always going to be funny? <laughs> well, the the good thing about the show is, I mean, we, ha we are not limited in any way on uh, characters or content because we have all of history and... A fictional universe in hell plus a, a pretty much any kind of like fictional ip that we can like like we had characters that were based in hogwarts you know and the, it's like we can kind of stretch it because it's you know it, it takes place in hell so we can kind of go anywhere yeah that's true i mean almost anybody could go to hell have you had yeah. a character that appeared in hell that felt just wrong that they were in hell but then at the end of it felt so right <laughs> I think um, we've had that. that at first you were like it doesn't make sense like narratively that this person would end up in hell but then you're like oh that's a whole I side mean, of them i never thought of for a time because like we don't limit ourselves to just people in hell like we were gonna reach out and like we've had people guest visit from heaven or they we've crank mm -hmm. called heaven and it, like i think for a while we were considering whether or not we wanted troy baker to play jesus <laughs> so we're still looking for our Jesus. At some point, we'll get somebody to play Jesus, I'm sure. Yeah, we did have a thing where, like, Helen Keller was in hell, oh, but it turns God. out it was all a clerical mix-up. <laughs> yeah, she, she was there by accident. <laughs> and and then so then she, yeah. So it's like, there's, like, stuff like that. We're like, wait, how? And, like, that was, a, a re, like, why is she in hell? We don't know. And it's like, oh, yeah, it, that, was a, that, was a, that was our bad. That was a mix-up. She shouldn't be in, she should be in heaven. The paperwork I, got misshuffled. Yeah. I love that, though, because you could have played it either way, right? You could have played it that she actually wasn't the hero that everybody <laughs> made her out to be, that she had, like, this deep, dark secret that only the devil knew about, that she could have been in hell at, on purpose. But I like the way you guys played it, too. That's nice. Keep the keep the image of Helen Keller the way, the way that yeah. the world thinks it is. Yeah, Helen Keller's estate might not be as uh, forgiving with <laughs> her being down there. That's true. Well, gentlemen, it's been a lot of fun having you on What's Good Games Live with us today. If people want to check out Good Morning from Hell and want to follow you guys, where is the best place for them to do so? Uh, myself, I'm on Twitter at B Gibbles, B G I B B L E S, and then Chris is at Chris Damaris. Chris, mm -hmm. where can they find Good Morning From Hell? It's anywhere, everywhere. anywhere you listen to uh, a podcast, just search "Good Morning From Hell," uh, or if uh, we also have it on roosterteeth.com, but it's real, it's it's mo it's an audio podcast. So there's we just have uh, it, like cartoons and stuff and images of on uh, roosterteeth.com, and then the if you want to follow us on social media or like see images of the sh of like uh, fan drawings of characters and stuff uh, or. Anything like that's just at Morning From Hell on Twitter, Instagram. Yeah. Awesome. And if you already follow us on Twitter, we tweeted it out. And we have all of those links there. Yeah. Yes. Hey. Yeah. Yes. Speaking of Brit, you got you to gotta check your Twitter. Uh, you got to check oh, yours. What? You got to check no. yours, man. Oh, yeah. no. You guys have a Twitter battle going on? She needs to watch Spider-Man. You need to play Pagel. <laughs> Sounds like a bargain waiting to be struck. <sighs> 
<laughs> I'm, I might download it just so you'll watch Spider-Man because it's so good. I, I do feel like compromise. one of you is going to has a better end of that deal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, one of you certainly has a shorter time commitment. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but both yeah. are great pieces of art. I love them both. Um, thank you so much again, you guys, for joining us here on the show. We hope that you guys listening do go and check out our episode of Good Morning from Hell. They do lots of great work over there. So thank you again. And we will see you guys later this week, as I mentioned at the top of the show, and Brittany did. We've got lots of streaming happening. So you'll see lots of us. All right, everybody. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.